MasterChef is full of unexpected twists. Like, do you remember what happened during Sasha's elimination round? Thanks for nothing. But what followed next was even crazier. Sasha, we believe that you have reached the end of the road. Well, that is just one of the times when contestants realize they've been eliminated on MasterChef. All right, let's dive right in and talk about a contestant who had no idea what he was getting into. You've got the potential to be great. Will you accept that offer? Hell yes. Yes, I'm referring to Gabriel from season eight. If MasterChef season eight, episode 16, had the goal of tugging at everyone's heartstrings, they absolutely nailed it. The first hour of the recent two hour special was pretty uneventful, but the ending? It was nothing short of legendary. Now, let's get into the challenge itself. The home cooks were tasked with making pasta from scratch. And let me tell you, it's nowhere near as easy as it sounds. They are all going to need to make one of those incredible fresh pastas. But Gabriel, he really went above and beyond. You could practically feel his dedication shining through the screen. Intricate and demanding. Guys, 15 minutes gone. Despite being a total rookie in this area, Gabriel carried himself with an unexpected level of confidence. And no, it wasn't cocky at all. Things were going smoothly during the prep, but everything took a nosedive during the presentation. Gabriel's confidence was quickly shattered. The judges, sadly, were not impressed with how the dish looked. Have you ever cooked cannelloni before? Never before, chef. This is not what it's supposed to look like. And when it was Ramsey's turn to give his critique, he even went as far as to mistakenly call it lasagna instead of cannelloni. Ouch! When it came to the taste, well, let's just say it was a total disaster. The filling was bland, the sauce was way too sweet, basically the whole dish was a chaotic mess from start to finish. So, it's no surprise that Gabriel was sent packing especially since his dish missed the mark by a long shot. But here's the thing, Gabriel didn't lose faith in himself, and the judges saw something in him too. They recognized his potential, even if he needed a little refining to truly shine. And you'll never guess who stepped up to guide him. None other than Ramsey and Aaron Sanchez. Yep, the two judges were so impressed by his commitment and passion that they decided to give him a boost in his culinary journey. And personally, gonna send you to culinary school. Now, that was a twist no one saw coming. Ramsey, in particular, wasn't about to let such raw talent slip through the cracks. He knew exactly how to help Gabriel take his skills to the next level. I can only imagine how overwhelming that must have been for Gabriel. A whirlwind of emotions, for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> And Sanchez wasn't far behind either. He even offered Gabriel a spot at his New Orleans restaurant. With this golden opportunity, Gabriel had a real shot at making it big in the culinary world. And it wasn't just about his cooking skills. His genuinely kind personality played a huge role too. After his elimination, fans rallied around Gabriel, offering words of encouragement. Many pointed out that for his age, he was a strong contender and it's a shame things went south with that cannelloni. They also praised Ramsey and Sanchez for giving him a chance to grow, which just goes to show how much faith they had in his potential. One viewer said, Gabriel, he was such a good contender for his age and he didn't really make anything bad until the cannelloni. It was awesome that Goran paid for his culinary school though, because that shows how good he was and how much potential Gordon thought he had. Well, Gabriel is one of those few contestants who left Matterchef smiling despite being eliminated. But guess what? In an electrifying premiere of MasterChef US Season 13, viewers were introduced to a vibrant mix of chefs hailing from the Northeast. Determined to secure a spot in the competition, these chefs put their heart and soul into crafting their signature dishes, hoping to impress the judges. Some managed to win them over, while others faced the sting of disappointment as they were sent home without a ticket to the next round. Among the contenders was Eddie, a 31-year-old party promoter from Brooklyn, who took a bold step by presenting his pistachio tres leches, 
with pistachio crumble, raspberry sauce, and creme anglaise. Leches, I did a pistachio cake with tres leches, creme anglaise, a raspberry sauce, and a pistachio crumble. Although the dish had an unconventional look, Judge Joe was quick to acknowledge its visual appeal. Though he found the taste to be lacking, even with his reservations, Joe couldn't help but be charmed by Eddie's personality, leading him to give a cautious yes. Aaron also gave his approval, though he voiced concerns about the sauce and moisture levels in the dish. However, guest judge Daphne wasn't as easily convinced as her fellow judges. And because there wasn't quite the balance of sauce to cake that I would have liked to have seen, she firmly rejected the dish, citing the imbalance between the sauce and cake as a deal breaker. Ramsey sided with her, expressing doubts about whether Eddie was truly ready for the high-pressure environment of the competition. You could see the disappointment written all over Eddie's face. But just when it seemed like his journey was over, Joe threw him a lifeline that no one saw coming. And what I'm gonna do when you come back to New York, I'll take you in and tour my restaurants. In a heartwarming twist, Joe offered Eddie a job at his New York restaurant, a move that left everyone, including the judges, deeply moved. Ramsey, known for his tough exterior, even showed a rare moment of emotion, joking that it was as infrequent as a once every 10 years eclipse. Viewers were quick to applaud Joe's compassionate gesture, recognizing it as a defining moment that could change Eddie's life and open up new doors for his culinary career. It's proof that sometimes the most unexpected decisions can lead to the most incredible opportunities just like what happened in this next episode right here. When I told my parents that I'm going to audition, my dad told me expect the locks to be changed. So, this contestant was only 19 years old at the time, but he didn't let his age stop him from going all in. The guy poured everything he had into the competition, and guess what? He made it all the way to the top 10. I have anybody here supporting me right now, but I do this to be able to pursue a dream that I've had since I was a little. Unfortunately, Micah didn't have much love or support from his family when he decided to pursue his culinary dreams. His parents weren't exactly thrilled with his ambitions and even went so far as to threaten to cut ties with him. Dad really wanted me to go to school really badly. But despite the lack of support, Micah wasn't about to throw in the towel. He pushed forward, stayed calm under pressure, and kept cooking with a fierce determination to prove himself, not just to the judges, but to his family as well. I love them so much, but nobody's gonna hold me back from my dream. Here's a quick shout out to all the young dreamers out there who don't have their parents' support. Don't let that hold you back or dampen your spirits. Keep chasing your dreams. Now, back to Micah. He had a bit of a rocky start during the auditions. Despite his story still being hidden, the judges weren't about to give him an easy pass. So, oh, does it warrant an apron? For me, it's no. But Ramsey, being the seasoned chef that he is, saw past the rough edges and threw Micah a lifeline. What it's like to have passion to turn your life around. And that's why. Yep, he handed him a golden battle card. Ramsey himself knows what it's like to come from a not-so-supportive family. He essentially built his career from the ground up, which is why he's got a knack for spotting that same hunger in others. Believe in you. Thank you, chef. Can we get this? But of course, there was someone who didn't agree with Ramsey's call. There's something in him that resonates with me at 19. You just wasted your battle card. You know who I'm talking about, that snooty critic who always has something negative to say. But look at what happened next. Micah seized the opportunity with everything he had, and it wasn't long before his talent won Joe over. Friends, have you eaten in a starred restaurant and had a piece of fish like this before? No, sir, I've never eaten in a starred restaurant. See, Ramsey is a man of his word. When he spots someone with real potential, he doesn't just walk away. He makes sure they get the support they need to truly shine. As for Micah, he not only earned himself a coveted white apron, but also secured his place in the next round of the competition. I've never been given a second chance in life, and to have somebody like you. Isn't that the kind of mentor we all wish we had? Gordon really knows how to bring out the best in people. Now, let's talk about an episode that had everyone reaching for tissues. Once again, Micah found himself at the center of attention. I'm referring to episode 20 of season 10, which fittingly carried the title, 
family reunion. If you were paying attention earlier, you might have guessed what's coming. But still, this episode was packed with heartwarming surprises, especially when the Top 7's families made a surprise entrance into the MasterChef kitchen. They were there to cheer on their favorite cooks, who had to whip up dishes inspired by their families in hopes of impressing the judges and staying in the competition. The stakes were sky high, with only three chefs guaranteed a spot in the top six. As for the others, they had the daunting task of replicating one of Ramsay's Michelin star winning dishes, all while keeping up with his breakneck pace as they cooked side by side. To kick things off, the first to walk through the misty doorway was Sarah's husband, Michael, bringing a huge smile to her face. He was quickly followed by Noah's mom, who walked in right behind him. <laughs> My mom is here. Uh, what an amazing... What followed next was a heartwarming parade of spouses eagerly bursting into the kitchen, rushing into the arms of their beloved partners. It was an emotional scene for sure. I mean, it was truly touching to see everyone reuniting with their loved ones after such a long time apart. Nick is your father, Christopher. Having my dad here, I'm so grateful. And Well, everyone except for Micah. Now, uh, Micah, unfortunately... When you compare his situation to the others running into their family's arms, it's just so heartbreaking, isn't it? It's really a bummer to witness, especially with everyone else being showered with love from their nearest and dearest. Ramsey, always quick to notice these things, tried to lift Micah's spirits, reassuring him that even though his family couldn't be there, he still had a family right there with the MasterChef crew. Tonight, you're not alone, okay? You're with us. You're with the MasterChef family. It was a kind gesture, but honestly, it's hard not to feel that pang of loneliness for Micah in the middle of all those joyful reunions. My culinary dream has never really been positively looked. Oh man, that was tough to watch. If it wasn't a regular part of the show, I might even say this moment felt a bit tone deaf on the producer's part, but considering they likely planned this out well before the contestants locked in their spots, it's hard to place blame. Still, it was so heartwarming to see Dorian, with her motherly instincts, step in and give Micah a comforting hug. It's hard. Everybody else is, you know, in the arms of their family. Yeah, he really looked like he needed that. Anyway. With the heartfelt reunions wrapped up, it was time to get down to business. The task ahead was clear. Create a dish straight from the heart, something that truly embodies the essence of home. Whoever makes the best dish will receive immunity from the upcoming elimination challenge. Honestly, I can't help but wonder what it must feel like to cook in an intense setting like this with your family watching. Sure, whipping up a favorite recipe for your partner at home is one thing, but doing it in the MasterChef kitchen? That's a whole different ball game. Does having your loved ones there crank up the pressure? knowing they're watching your every move? Or does it give you a comforting boost, knowing they're cheering you on? Probably a mix of both, but mostly I imagine it's grounding, helping you stay focused in the midst of the chaos. As the cooking began, Ramsey made his way up to the balcony to chat with the family members, and that's when he had a particularly cute exchange with Dorian's husband. Ramsey asked if he always knew Dorian had this incredible cooking talent, without hesitation. Her husband confidently replied that he always knew, though Dorian herself took a bit longer to realize it. Then came the moment that really turned up the heat. Ramsey was hit with a bombshell question. Tell you about her crush about you? She did not tell my crush, no. She did, why would she be discussing that with you? You could tell Ramsey was caught off guard, probably wondering why on earth Dorian would be sharing her crush with her own husband. I mean, who does that? After a good laugh and a firm handshake, Ramsey returned to the judges' table, but you could see it in his eyes. He knew deep down that all of this was hitting Micah hard, especially given that he was just 19. Now, let's be honest, I do feel for Micah, okay? Um, we've never had... Oh man, you could tell he was holding back tears. Micah opened up about how his mom had sparked his love for cooking, and how much he wished she could be there with him. And I really wish that she could be here right now. But I can't think about that. Honestly, that's the kind of stuff that tugs at your heartstrings. I mean, 
Back in season 4, when Chrissy's son couldn't make it, at least he sent a video message to show his mom some love and encouragement. It's like, come on, Micah deserved at least that much, don't you think? Ramsey then stepped in with some comforting words, acknowledging the tough time Micah was going through. He didn't just offer generic advice either. He told Micah that he'd been in his shoes before and knew exactly what it felt like to be in that spot. In your situation at 19, hey, I've been ignored by my father. But more than that, Ramsey expressed his faith in Micah, reassuring him that he was confident Micah would bounce back stronger and rise above the challenge. More than you'll ever, ever know. Hey, you may not have any immediate family here. I mean, what could be more encouraging than hearing Ramsey himself say he considers you part of his family? This is the side of Ramsey we don't often see in Hell's Kitchen. And honestly, it's the side of him that I appreciate the most. Now, tell me about the dish, what are you doing? A pistachio crusted lamb chop with juniper salt. But back to the challenge, when it came time for the family members to stick around for the judging, the tone shifted. The judges weren't about to go easy just because there were special guests present. Micah was the last to present his dish, a pistachio-crusted lamb chop paired with charred Romanesco and Labney. As soon as Joe's expression changed, my alarm bells started ringing. The problem for me is that it's not pink, it's stone red raw. The issue? The lamb was undercooked and red in the center. But despite the initial concern, when the judges tasted it, they found that the flavors were surprisingly better than expected. The lamb, though not perfectly cooked, wasn't as rare as it looked. 90 seconds under. Yeah, I think we stand corrected. Pretty much medium rare to rare. Still, if you ask me, it wasn't exactly a glowing review. You've had a tough journey across this competition, and you've, you've risen. But even so, it gave Micah a glimmer of hope. My mom could be here to see what the judges see in me. And honestly, as viewers, we're all proud of you, Micah. You gave it your all, and that's what matters most. But eventually, what we all feared came to pass. After the critiques were delivered, it was time to say goodbye. While the other contestants were surrounded by their families, receiving comforting words and loving embraces, Micah stood alone. It is awesome. I'm so proud. Thankfully, Dorian stepped in, offering him a heartfelt hug and some reassuring words that things would be all right. Come on, come on, it's gonna be okay, okay? I have to say, I absolutely love the bond between them. Even after the show ended and Dorian claimed the Master Chef title, she continued to support Micah. Just take a look at those genuine smiles. It's enough to melt your heart, isn't it? Now, back to the episode. In the end, it was Sherry, Dorian, and Sarah who snagged the golden ticket of immunity leaving the guys to sweat it out for survival. And let me tell you, the challenge ahead was no joke. The challenge that you're about to face, it will be the most stressful. In case you need a reminder, they had to cook a Michelin star dish at a Michelin star pace. No time for mistakes. As Ramsey put the final touches on his culinary masterpiece, the pressure was on for the guys to keep up. You gotta keep up from the first step. Yeah, he doesn't Finish. stop for anybody. They had just 60 seconds to follow Ramsey's every move. No lagging behind. Not even by a minute. Flambe. Tilt the pan, Nick. Put the when it came to Micah, his fish wasn't quite ready to flip due to a cut, but he was determined to press on. Nearly ready. Should I turn it up? Don't turn it. Absolutely turn it up. Sensing disaster, Dorian shouted out, trying to hold him back. But it was too late. The fish was undercooked. Micah, don't do it. You just lost confidence. Meanwhile, Ramsey was already plating up, and Micah's fish still looked far from done. Really being distracted by this cut he has. This plating and Micah's potatoes are still... As the countdown to the finish line began, the kitchen filled with shouts aimed at Micah, urging him to hurry up and get his fish on the plate. Come on, Micah, hurry up! When the clock finally hit zero, Noah and Nick let out sighs of relief, but the worry lines on Micah and Subha's faces told a different story. They knew they were in trouble. I'm not happy at all. This is not my best work. I'm looking at the other plates. Micah stepped up to face the judges, but with Dorian's unwavering support behind him, 
he found the strength to go on. In the end, his minestrone earned high praise and was even hailed as the standout dish of the night. Minestrone, it's beautiful, it's fragrant. That should be an individual dish on its own, especially when you start camera. Unfortunately, though, the undercooked fish proved to be a fatal flaw. Just see, you are literally about two minutes away from there. By now, it's clear that undercooked protein is usually a one-way ticket home. Despite this, Micah did receive some well-deserved praise for his efforts. Is raw, and I think you know that. With Nick and Noah safely through to the next round, the spotlight turned to Subha and Micah, who found themselves in the bottom two. Oh, yeah, that, that wasn't pink, that was raw. Yeah, but it's the best bistro. Subha had managed to cook his protein perfectly, but his minestrone didn't fare as well. So, it was a tight race between the two. But as tough as it is to say, we all know that between an undercooked fish and a subpar minestrone, the fish is usually the bigger concern. And leaving, not entering into the top six, we're sorry to say. It was a tough break. True to form, Ramsey extended a lifeline to Micah, offering him the chance to have a heartfelt conversation and gain some valuable insights to fuel his culinary dreams. Set up a meeting to help guide you to where you'd like to go in this business. That's such an incredible gesture. Even though Micah was disappointed, he took away a valuable lesson from the experience. He learned to be his own biggest supporter and appreciated the belief others had shown in him throughout his journey. Oh, I would fail and I would fall flat on my face. Ah, oh, that's so touching. However, it's clear that Micah's situation, especially with no one there to support him in person, was a significant psychological disadvantage. It was heart-wrenching to see him go. I know if I have a home to go home to when I go home. Courageous. I found myself wanting to reach through the screen and give that poor guy a hug. Many viewers shared this sentiment and were disappointed to see him leave so soon, especially given his lack of family support. One person commented, Micah is my favorite across all seasons. I think he was eliminated too soon. Years of age, you've shone beautifully and young man. Another viewer mentioned hearing that Micah had a friend who flew out to support him but wasn't allowed to visit by the producers. This was something I found on Reddit, so I can't verify its accuracy, but if you have any info on this, feel free to share in the comments. Regardless, Micah remains one of my favorites from the show. Team, it's incredible to see you produce food like- Micah, you've definitely earned a lot of support and admiration from fans. Don't forget that. Good job, Micah. Woo, great job, Micah. If you're listening, Micah, I hope you're doing well. You deserve so much more than what you got from your parents. And hey, don't be a stranger on Instagram, okay? But this next moment was truly one of those rare emotional highlights on MasterChef, a show that's not always known for its touching moments. But things took a surprising turn when the contestant least expected the elimination, leaving everyone on the edge of their seats. I'm talking about season five, when the contestants were informed that the upcoming team challenge would require them to work in pairs, a twist that would test their culinary skills and their ability to work together. When asked who he least wanted to team up with, Leslie didn't hesitate to name Aran, instantly sparking some serious tension between them. The air was thick with anticipation as the contestants waited to see who would be paired together. That's when things got really interesting. Courtney, the reigning champion and the mastermind behind the pairings, had the power to choose the teams, and she didn't hesitate to stir the pot. To Aran's dismay, she was paired with Leslie, the very person she least wanted to work with, a move that would either lead to disaster or a beautiful culinary symphony. In the pantry, Leslie, wanting to avoid any more drama, decided to go along with whatever Aran wanted, a surprising move that caught Aran off guard. This was the last kind of cooperation Aran expected from her teammate, and it left her wondering what Leslie was really thinking. But the drama didn't end there. Jump to the pressure test in episode 12, where the contestants had to showcase their skills with prawns in three different preparations, ceviche, tempura, and butterflied. The twist? Only one contestant would make it through, adding an extra layer of tension to the already intense challenge. Aran found herself in a tough spot, especially when dealing with the live prawns. 
handling them with incredible care and precision. In a surprising turn, Leslie, usually the confident and assertive contestant, took on a more humble approach as the pressure test unfolded. Just as nervous as the people behind me, they're just as good. We're the top 10 here, this is no joke. As the pressure intensified, Aran started to falter, and the emotional roller coaster reached its peak. Tears were almost on the brink as the contestants' fates hung in the balance, leaving everyone on the edge of their seats. I'm really stressed right now. Hey. That's when Ramsey stepped in, offering a much-needed pep talk. He reminded Aran of her achievements and encouraged her to push through the tough challenge, giving her the boost she needed to continue. When it came time for tasting, Leslie's dishes impressed the judges, but Aran faced some difficulties, especially with her ceviche, which lacked the freshness and flavor the judges were looking for. Cold because of the vinegar. Okay. The great thing about it, though, is the use of those chilies. The climax of the episode saw Leslie and Aaron, who had once been rivals but had formed an unexpected bond, standing in the spotlight as the final judgment was delivered. Our eldest versus our youngest. And how ironic is that when I grab some tissues? Because Leslie's heartfelt words during this moment really stole the show. I've been growing, and to work out my differences with this young lady, she's not a girl, she's a young lady. It was a real surprise. Ultimately, it was time to say goodbye. And, and Aran bid farewell to Leslie and the others, with Leslie coming out on top. But Aran didn't leave without offering her own heartfelt comments. Love you, girl. Wow. Now that is a turn around and a half. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> In a touching moment, Aran graciously acknowledged Leslie's potential and even predicted his eventual victory, leaving everyone a bit misty-eyed. Some viewers even felt that Aran deserved to stay longer and saw her as a real frontrunner, especially given her young age. Like this viewer here said, Aran, I think, should have stayed over Leslie, and she was a real frontrunner at such a young age. Leslie did a good job, though. I just liked Ahran better. And yes, I am in complete agreement with what this viewer has to say. But what do you think? Who do you think was better? Arhan or Leslie? And can you think of more times from MasterChef that left you shocked? Make sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. By the way, do check out my social media pages to stay up to date with all of my content. And if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see this next one. It's even crazier.